Today we are back with another less than $400 gaming PC build and remember with this new season of Flippin' Friday you're only watching this video if I successfully built and flipped this PC locally. We had a great start to episode 1 of Flippin' Friday season 2 where I built and sold that green GTX 1080 PC for $550 but today we're going to be trying to flip a build that's even cheaper than that. I'm honestly a little nervous about today's build because it's definitely going to look amazing with our custom spray painting components and whatnot, but the performance isn't going to be fantastic. And honestly, I'm just going to be happy if we get like a hundred dollar profit, but either way, we got to build this thing first. And real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself, and they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. Alright, so once again, just as a reminder, this new season 2 of Flippin' Friday, I'll be assembling all of these PC builds on my live streams, twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf, so if you want to follow along in real time with these flipping projects, that's how you do it. For today's build, I started with the Ryzen 5 2600, and to be honest, I wouldn't necessarily target this specific CPU you, but since I scooped it up for just $41 used, I just had to use it. The Ryzen 5 3600 would be the better pick if you're willing to spend an extra $20, but if you're extremely strapped for cash, then you can't go wrong with the 2600. I also like this model because it pairs perfectly with our older MSI B350 Tomahawk Arctic White, and this was also on a used sale for $65 over on eBay. Believe it or not, these beautiful all-white motherboards used to be a normal thing a few years ago. I don't know who made the decision to stop making these Arctic boards, but I definitely hate them for it. Now, I did get kind of screwed as I didn't notice until building that it didn't come with an IO shield. The buyer kindly left me the wrapper for it though, so rip to me on that. Those mother effers. Next up we have the RAM, and I use my typical choice for all white builds, which is the Timetech Pinnacle 2x8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. Honestly, for B350 motherboards, I'm a little hesitant to go any higher than that because back in the day, these boards really struggled with reaching the higher RAM speeds, and I'll have on the screen now if we were even actually able to to use that 3200 megahertz or if we had to dial that down a bit. Next up we have the SSD and per usual I just went with whatever the cheapest Gen 3 NVMe drive that I could find for one terabyte and this time it was the usual Team MP33. I paid $36 for this on Amazon and there's always plenty of models around the $40 price range that you can use. And finally to polish off this motherboard prep we have the CPU cooler and I of course went with the stock Ryzen cooler which I painted white. I actually noticed that there was some weird streak in the thermal paste though. Not sure if one of us here at the ZTT HQ did that or if it came like this, but I did decide to completely wipe that off and replace it with the Corsair XTM70 paste. Now that our motherboard is fully prepped though, I moved on to the power supply, and this is yet another Apivia Prestige 600 watt unit that I picked up for $51 brand new on Amazon. This is a tier C unit, so don't be quick to judge just the Apivia brand by itself, but unfortunately, I am starting to see this deal not be readily available as it's been for the last few months, which is a little scary. Thankfully, the MSI Mag A550BN has been going on sale, so I personally bought a bunch of of them, so did everyone else in the ZTT Discord server that's following the ZTT Deals channel, so keep your eyes peeled for either of these power supplies and you'll be good to go. I also applied some white carbon fiber vinyl wrap, which I'll have linked down in the description, but somehow I accidentally brought with me this super short piece that I cut that wasn't the correct dimension. Whenever you do this for yourself, you definitely want to cover the entire side face of the power supply, but I got lucky AF here because the hole in the PSU basement of the case actually covered up the outsides of the power supply that were showing, so we were actually good to go. And I also realized midway through the build that I never installed the white cable extensions. I usually do this before the power supply goes into the case, and this is just the easy DIY kit that I almost always use for the budget builds. But yeah, going back to this case though, this is yet again the Sama Z4 Steel White. I've used this before, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this case, but it continues to just be the best ATX size white case that comes with pre-installed ARGB fans. I keep doing this research over and over again trying to find a different white case, and there's just always something wrong with them that I don't like. For example, this DIY 
Wi-Fi PC S3-W LED looks great for the price, but these fans are stuck to rainbow colors and you can't actually change them. This Raid Max Meshian case looks pretty unique as well, but the back fan isn't ARGB while the front ones are. Gross. The Sama Z4 white steel is simply just the best option in my opinion, but hopefully that changes soon because I really like to try out something else. And finally, the last part to go in here is of course our graphics card, and this is yet another custom painted GTX 10 series card from EVGA. This time I got the 1070 though instead of my normal 1080. It's super easy to remove these accent pieces and paint them, and although the card is still mostly black, these little white pieces really tie the color scheme of the entire build together. All in all, here's what the entire parts list is looking like, and as you can see, my total paid price for this build was $377. That honestly doesn't leave us a ton of room for profit because the Ryzen 5 2600 and GTX 1070 just isn't an amazing combination in 2023 anymore, but because of the aesthetics, per usual, which is always my strategy, I think we will be able to get a little bit of profit here. During the stream, we were discussing how much we think I can get away with selling it for. Some people said $500, but most of us were around the $450 to $475 mark, and I'm going to go with $475 to start, and we'll go from there. Before we get this thing posted, though, we of course need to benchmark it, and here are some quick results. I first ran 3 d Mark Time Spike just to get a consistent score across all of my builds. Not like we really need to advertise this to the customer, but here we got $6,063. For a quick reference point, my previous episode of Flippin' Friday, which we sold for $600 had a GTX 1080 that got a slightly higher score with 7,388. Next up, I tested Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 because I'm sure a lot of potential customers will want to see this one. And with 1080p balance settings, which are basically just medium, we got 76 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 is another one that people might want to see, not because the game is super popular anymore, but because people do know that it's hard to run and it was recently updated. So here in 1080p with low settings, we got just above that 60 FPS target mark. Hogwarts Legacy followed up after that, and in 1080p low, I got 65 FPS, which is pretty solid, and here's Forza Horizon 5, and I put the settings at 1080p high, and I got an FPS average of 86. Here's all the other games that I tested. Pretty good results, especially for a sub $400 gaming PC, so honestly, if this is the price range that you're particularly interested in, this would make for a pretty decent personal PC as well. And for those of you that are interested in the cooling setup that we have here with the stock Ryzen cooler and this Sama Z4 case, after a 10-minute stress test, our GPU only peaked up to 76 degrees while our CPU peaked at 73. These are beautiful temperatures. And I honestly just copy and pasted everything from the previous episode, but of course changed the information like the parts list and the benchmarks. I also included a quick explanation that you can set the RGBs to whatever you want. I know that sounds obvious to us PC builders, but I also made sure to include photos that showcase the different RGB options that you have because we always want our builds to appeal to the most amount of potential customers. If they are specifically looking for a white and blue PC, for example, they won't see them from the first initial image, but if they scroll through, they'll see that that color combination is possible along with the other colors. So I got the build posted on November 26th, and here's how everything else went down from there. I got messages immediately about this PC, and I ended up sealing the deal within just a couple of hours of posting. I usually let the ad sit for a few days after the sale just to see how much attention they get, and I definitely messed up with the pricing on this one. I had so many people in just a two-day time span tell me that they're willing to buy it for full price and meet up right away. They weren't trying to haggle for a better price, they just wanted the deal ASAP. Look, a red flag! and that typically means that you priced it too low. Because of the aesthetics of this build and the holiday time of year, love that it was snowing during this transaction, by the way, I definitely could have sold it for about $500 or possibly even more, lesson learned on that one. Overall though, with a $377 purchase price in an immediate sale of $475, I made a nice little $98 profit on this one, and it's another win for the second season of Flippin' Friday. After two episodes, we're now up to $245 of total profit, which isn't too shabby for two builds, and I'm already starting to work on the next one, so hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Also, please follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash because that's where I've been building all of these PCs live while talking to you guys. And finally, feel free to click the video that's on the screen now if you want to get caught up on the previous episode of Flippin' Friday.